there is no nutrition science. There's a gaping hole where the nutrition science could be, but isn't there. And that gaping hole is filled with nothing more than this vacuous, ethereal, agenda-driven, theology-driven, financially-driven disinformation, misinformation, nonsense, poppycock. <laughs> I was in academia for just over two decades, during which time I had three different specializations. I started out as a, as a specialist in the field of the physiology of rest and exercise, sports science. From there, I went to human nutrition for a few years, and then I went away from human nutrition and ended up teaching cardiovascular pathophysiology for the last part of my uh, career. For those that don't know, cardiovascular pathophysiology is what causes heart disease, mm. basically, and what doesn't. Learned a whole bunch of stuff, and all, all of those things were overarched with the understanding of statistics, statistical inference, research methodology, etc. So that led me to my new career when I decided I didn't want to be an, an academic anymore. I decided I was going to be a social media influencer instead, because that was going to be the thing that was going to be absolutely, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and so I got into being um, an influencer. I set up a YouTube channel, and it was originally called Nutrition Science Watchdog, purely because there are so many people out there talking about nutrition science one of the things you mentioned and that you talk about a lot is nutrition research and yeah. i am a complete layman i barely graduated high school i hear you talk about some of the stuff you talk about it brilliantly that's why i like watching your channel i foolishly throughout my whole life would hear these nutrition studies on the news and foolishly thought that those were there for my benefit and now i realize they weren't there for my benefit but more so than that most of them, I think, are pretty useless. Can you talk about nutrition science a little bit? Yeah. Well, nutrition science, I'll give it that one. It's a misnomer. It's a complete have. There is no nutrition science. Science, experimental science, is the way that, well, it's one of the ways that human beings can inform on knowledge. What causes what? The way to determine cause and effect is via an experimental protocol. That's not my rules. That's what the scientific fraternity, for want of a better term, have come up with over the last two and a half thousand years or so. And the disciplines have changed very little in terms of what is required. So if I want to determine cause and effect, I need two subpopulations of, if we're, if we're dealing with human beings, which is what we are dealing with here, we need two subpopulations of human beings who at the outset of our study, those two subsets of people have to be identical. Because if they're not, we have uncoupled cause and effect, no matter what we observe. No matter, the, no matter the strength of the observation that we make, if we started with two populations that are not absolutely, utterly identical, you can forget making a claim about cause and effect. That is out with the disciplines of science. And if you say, we've got cause and effect evidence here, what you're actually telling me is that you don't know how to do science, you're ill-disciplined, and what these people that are making these cause and effect claims are actually doing is trying to feather their own nests, make themselves important, perpetuate their own careers, make themselves an expert in the field. Let's break down the word expert while we're at it, shall we? X is somebody who is no more and a spurts a drip under pressure. That's what an expert is. Expertise, based on the same word, sure, is a different thing, though. Expertise is a skill set, an understanding of a thing that is possessed by a person or isn't possessed by a person. 
So people at large either understand this about science. It is a discipline. There are rules. You must adhere to the rules to be taken seriously as a scientist. Or you're a pseudoscientist. Or you're a crackpot. There's not too much grey in there. So when people say, we have studies that prove cause and effect, this causes that, as relates to any heart health outcome in human beings, as that relates to any aspect of the dietary intakes of human beings whatsoever, they are lying to you. Quick interruption. Did you know we have an incredible membership site for you called healinghumanity.life? We have a special offer going on right now. Learn more at the link in the description. We have courses. We have expert Q and A's with the good doctors. We even have a Healing Humanity Heroes Zoom call once a week, highlighting real heroes that will inspire you on a path to healing. The community is wonderful. We're going to be implementing a buddy system so you can be held accountable, recipes, all sorts of great stuff to help you on a path to healing. Learn more at the link in the description below. Or they don't understand that there are no studies out there where they started with two populations of completely identical individuals. We're talking about sets of twins. So first of all, you need identical sets of twins that you can separate, lock in separate labs and keep them in those labs for their entire lifespans because we want to talk about what happens to somebody over their lifespan, don't we? Right. Ergo, we have to control all other confounds, covariates, collinearities, all these other rich threads that make up this tapestry of someone's health outcomes. They have to be all the same in both groups. Otherwise, forget it you're not talking cause and effect. You might be able to talk about associations, which don't prove cause and effect. Of course, you can't talk about associations if you then turn around, make, having made some observations, ignore those observations and publish some numbers that you made up because you adjusted what you observed. That's not, that's not even closely akin to science. That is fabrication. Oh, yes, but it's a mathematical procedure, they say, this multivariate adjustment, right. to which I usually say to people, great, since you're such an expert, why don't you tell me what the math is and how that's done exactly? Because I'll tell you what, in 20-something years in academia, I was involved in doing that a number of times myself. Were you? No? Okay, so don't tell me you know, all about multivariate adjustment. Goodness sake. Yeah, it's, it's fabrication, basically. So what we've got is bought and paid for theology and no science whatsoever. Anyone that says nutrition, human nutrition science, what they're telling you by saying human nutrition science, so three words in one sentence, they're telling you they don't understand the science. And as such, you shouldn't take that person remotely seriously. Right. That might sound harsh, but it's a reality. Science is a discipline. And any time you break any of the disciplines, you completely erode the ability to comment on what it is you're trying to comment on, which is cause and effect. Mm. Mm. It's one of those things that's so clear now to all of these studies over the years. Eggs are great for you. Eggs are going to kill you. Just flip-flopping back and forth. And then when I really think about it, I, it makes so much sense how you describe it. If you had two identical twins from birth, which is nearly impossible to do, but then you, you take like what could almost be a good study if you could do that to actually what they're doing now with these observational studies with food frequency questionnaires. I'm eating oh, strict oh. carnivore for, for 600 days now, and I can't even tell you what I ate like a week ago. And I only ate like five things, and they're asking people on mm. the standard American diet what they ate before. It's just, mm. it's craziness. Yeah, absolutely. Also, they start with populations for these prospective cohort studies where they look at incidence of disease versus reported intakes. So you put the nail on the head there straight away that these are reported food intakes, not actual food intakes, and there is a massive difference. And I'm not even talking about people who overtly lie about what they're eating. I'm talking about people with the right attitude, with the right, I'm going to be honest about what I'm eating. They have no idea. So they get it wrong. Food frequency questionnaires are invalid. 
anyone that wants to argue otherwise, again, does not understand statistical inference or scientific methodology or or anything much. Actually, th these people are theologues who are indulging in confirmation bias. People want bad news about their bad habit, uh, good news about their bad habits. Quick interruption. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in learning more about our documentary, Healing Humanity, The Power of a Proper Human Diet, or supporting it, please visit donate.healinghumanity.movie. Our goal is to reach millions of people that are hopeless right now and sharing the examples of real people over the course of one year that are undertaking a proper human diet to overcome obesity, type two diabetes, depression, anxiety, fertility issues. We couldn't do it without you. We thank you so much. We are also selling these shirts, Healing Humanity, The Power of Proper Human Diet. Every penny we get from those goes towards the documentary. And last, we have memberships. If you click the little join button, it's best to do it on desktop under any one of my YouTube videos, you can join and become a member. We have hundreds of members right now. We do members only videos. We do members only behind the scenes. You can email me as a member and I'll answer you. Um, and every penny from that goes to support the documentary. And the last thing is we have these Redmond's portable salt shakers. These things are awesome. You can get the best salt. You can take it with you. We sell these on the website along with our water bottles and cutting boards and every penny from all of those goes 100% towards supporting the documentary. You can also sign up for our newsletter, which is completely free. All of these links are in the description below. Thank you so much for your support. Now back to today's video. You said they're happy to accept that. Oh, this food, this food frequency question. It was validated. It says here in the study. Oh, great. How was that done? How did you validate it? Right. No, nonsense, absolute nonsense. That's one of the big challenges, I think, f for me, for other people, is we have all of this trust in science, which we mm. know isn't science, and our doctors. That's what led me down the path. This is, I always show people this. This is all the medication I was on, which I'm really embarrassed about in retrospect. I'm not on any of that anymore on carnivore. But um, mm. growing up, I always had so much trust in doctors, hospitals science that i'm hearing on there i don't know how we get people over that hopefully by doing videos like this but i think that's a big problem we're kind of kind of becomes the new normal for people that they just put so much trust in the system mm. people in general from the western world and it seems to me americans particularly for some reason absolutely deify physicians and the science two things about which they understand absolutely nothing and it's almost their lack of understanding of those things that causes the deification <laughs> the science and the doctors right. the doctors and the science if people understood what is being passed off for science by so-called scientists and what has been passed off as decent medicinal practice by allopathic physicians in particular, if they understood that, they would be horrified. All you need to do is spend, or not even as long as I did, you don't even need to spend several decades working at the coalface in science to understand how poor it is. It's, it's yeah, I, one of those things that you'll just have to take my word for. Or binge watch all my stuff and you'll understand because my whole gig is pointing to these flaws, foibles, faults and problems with the so-called science. Right. And one of the things I was I was getting to before and forgot that these, these prospective cohort studies that they start with and they say, let's look at reported food intakes versus the incidence of disease. These populations are universally a population of people who do not represent the general population mm. for a number of reasons, the most obvious of which is they are aged. You'll find these like, this was a population of people who were aged 60 at the outset and we followed them for 20 years. Why did they do that, Kerry? Well, because young people tend to express disease much less often than older people, right? 
So to get any results at all, so that we can find some statistical significance at all, we have to start with a population of people who have had 60 years of experience on the planet, because otherwise we're not going to get enough disease to find anything. All right? Right. So what did those people do for 60 years? Because we didn't control those people for 60 years, did we? We didn't keep them in a lab for 60 years waiting for the study to start. These people lived their lives. Some of them smoked, some of them drank, some of them ate sugar, some of them exercised and some didn't, some got educated and some didn't, some worked manual labour their whole lives and some worked in an office. Forget it. Secondly, these studies then start saying, this study absolutely proves that your risk of heart disease is X percent higher if you eat this and not that. Oh, my risk? Well, the population that you looked at, even if it wasn't already aged more than I am, which it is, this is a population of people made up of roughly 50% males and 50% females. Now, I'm sorry if this upsets some people, but people are one or the other. You've got two choices. Right. I'm a male. So any results affected by any input from females is not valid to me. It cannot speak to my risk. Okay, so they're too old to represent me. They're a mix of genders, and I'm not. I'm one or the other. Right. Right. And I could go on, I could go on all day about reasons why these cohort studies are nothing more than fantasy. They are they are a theological mishmash. They are not anything remotely akin to science. And they certainly can not under any circumstances inform you on your risk of anything under any circumstances. Right. I hope that's really clear. Awesome. Well, this has been great. I'm going to have a link to your uh, YouTube channel below. Is there anything else you want to mention or shout out or where people can find you, follow you? Yeah, look, if, if there is anybody out there that's never heard of me, hasn't seen my YouTube channel, doesn't see what goes on over there and doesn't know quite what to expect, let me give you a warning. <laughs> what you're going to get is exactly what you've got today in terms of the information. You're going to get good, robust, scientifically valid, disciplined advice, information, from someone who is a genuine former scientist who has worked at this cold face, who has published multiple peer reviewed publications, undertaken multiple multi million dollar external consultancies, a person who really knows what he's talking about, yours truly. What you're also going to see is that person, me, playing a bunch of different characters precisely in order to try and ah, hook you in. It's a clickbait type. Thing. I've got a character called the Field Marshal of the Meat Militia who wears a pretend military uniform and struts around with a horse crop and all of this. There is a very, very uh, badly behaved small yellow teddy bear. He shows up from time to time and gives his opinion on things. Um, and there's this other character I play that gives you the science but doesn't use big words. In fact, he uses quite small ones, often very small words. Four little ones, a lot of them. So be ready for it. It's yeah. it's awesome. I I will vouch for Professor Barkay. I've been watching your channel more and more lately. And I really enjoy it. It really helps me as sort of a layman. Some of these things, there's some valid concerns that people have on carnivore, and then you go watch one of your videos, and you're like, it's common sense. Like this makes sense. You break it down, and it makes sense, and you have the science mm -hmm. and stuff to back it up. So. Really yeah. appreciate you you coming on the channel. Open invite. Pleasure. Would love to do another one with you, maybe a live stream at some point. You and bet. Yes, yeah. sir. Really appreciate Pleasure. it. Ciao. Have a good day.